yesterday enriching session by our dynamic resource person, Dr. Stella Mascarenas Keys, on the theme Colonization, Migration, and the International Catholic Goan Community, with active participation of academicians, research scholars, and students attending from It was coming first. What's happened? What's happened now? Please excuse me for that little uh, technical glitch there. Uh, I hope you can all hear me again. Kindly confirm that they know. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Afrino. As I just said last, uh, I don't know if you've heard me, but we've had a enriching and dynamic session yesterday uh, by Dr. Stella by Dr. Stella Mascarenas Keys. And today, we are confident that our esteemed resource persons will evoke an equally active deliberation on the theme. At the onset of day two, I call upon our administrator, Reverend Father Antonio Salema, to address the gathering. Respected resource persons, Miriam Rodriguez and Roland de Souza, principal of the college, Dr. Blanche Mascarenish, vice principals, Ursula Barreto and Sandra Fernandez, faculty, respected participants, and my dear students. <clears throat> After having listened to the beautiful and exciting presentation by Dr. Stella Mascarenish Peace yesterday, on emigration of Goans to the other parts of the world and how the Goan diaspora, while contributing towards the growth of the, of the land of adoption, yet also strive to sustain their Goan roots through various activities. Today, we have the privilege of listening to two eminent personalities, Milin Rodriguez and Roland de Souza, who will be speaking to us on Goa's connection with Karachi. Being a port area, Karachi had a sizable Goan population living in this city. The place has a special connection with us Goans. Archbishop Emeritus Cardinal Joseph Kutz of Goan origin was the Archbishop of Karachi from 2012 till his retirement in 2021. Mother House of the Sisters of the Franciscans, Franciscan Missionaries of Christ the King, commonly known as FMCK, identified more with the Lutz Convent, Saligaon, was in Karachi. Its co-founder was Sister Bridget Sikwere. Due to the trouble and other problems, the congregation has shifted the mother house to Saligar, but they still have 16 houses in Pakistan. Also, we may be familiar with the now defunct company monthly, Dor Muinachi Roti. It was started in 1915 by Father Vincent Lobo from Sangolda, Goa, and was published from Karachi. 
to cater to the Konkani speaking people living there. His publication was shifted to Old Goa in 1964. Karashi offered a lot of job opportunities, which the Goans took full advantage of. But wherever Goans have gone, they have also carried with them their joie de vivre, creating an atmosphere of happy living in communal harmony. It is this distinctive feature of Goans who can get along with anyone and assimilate the culture of the land of adoptions and live in perfect harmony, communal harmony, that makes the community an endearing community. We thank our uh, eminent speakers, Mr. Menin Rodriguez and Mr. Roland D'Souza, for accepting to be part of this exciting webinar. And I wish all the participants a fruitful morning. God bless you all. Thank you, Father. We are grateful for your constant support and encouragement of all our academic endeavors. Our coordinators, Dr. Sharmila Paish and Dr. Afonso Botelo, along with the organizing committee, have put in all the work behind the scenes to bring this seminar to fruition. I invite Dr. Afonso Botelo to introduce us to the theme of, this, of the sessions today. A warm welcome to the second day of the international webinar on Window to the World, Understanding Goa's Out-Migration, a historical, philosophical, and sociological perspective. Yesterday, we heard Dr. Stella Mascarenas Keys talk to us on the theme, Colonialism, Migration, and the International Catholic Goan Community. Today, we have two more speakers. Mr. Manon Rodriguez, who will talk on Karachi, Goan eminence and influence in the diaspora, and Mr. Roland de Souza, who will speak on how a Bardius Goan found himself in Karachi. Goans have had a long history of migration to various parts of the world. Today, Karachi may not be on the list of the foreign cities Goans migrate to. However, the city has a community of over 10,000 Pakistanis with Goan ancestry whose migration to Pakistan may be traced to around 1820s as Karachi was then an attractive economic destination. While Goans migrate, uproot themselves from Goa and re-territorialize themselves in different countries, the constitutive element Goanness is being decisively shaped by outside forces and changed by all the far-flung places they have come to call their homes. With reference to Goan migration to Karachi too, there has been twice migration of Goans, first to Karachi and then to America or Canada or other parts of the world. An extraordinary feature of Goan migration and Goan diaspora has been the formation of Goan associations like the Karachi Goan Association or Goenka's own academy in Karachi. These associations have ensured the continuation of Goanness or the flavor of Goa in these places. Let's listen to the eminent speakers as they speak of the laudable Goan contribution to the ascendancy of Karachi. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm sure the audience are looking forward to the sessions. It is my pleasure to introduce our first speaker for the day, Mr. Menon Rodericks. Mr. Rodericks is an entrepreneur from Pakistan. 
He's a former member of the Pastoral Council of Archdiocese of Karachi, a former founder member of the Board of Governors of St. Patrick's and St. Joseph's Colleges. And in his spare time, he researches and writes about Goans in Pakistan. He has authored a book titled Footprints on the Sands of Time, a historical recollection and reflections, Goans of Pakistan, 1820 to 2020. May I mention that Mr. Rodericks is speaking to us from Toronto, Canada, where it is right now around midnight. We truly appreciate, sir, you consenting to speak to us in spite of the inconvenience to yourself. We are honored to have you with us today. To our participants, a reminder, your questions and comments are welcome and encouraged. Please use the chat box to put down any questions and we will have a question and answer round at the end of both the sessions. Thank you. Over to you, sir. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. So uh, first of all, uh, I think I would like to thank uh, St. Xavier's College uh, principal and the administration and everyone else who has put this uh, webinar together. Uh, it's not very easy from the technical point of view and from the coordination point of view. So I think you've done an excellent job. Uh, thank you for inviting me to uh, present my views. Uh, I do not have any scholarly background of being a researcher, but I have a lot of interest in, in Goan history. And uh, just because I've been listening to people and making notes and uh, trying my hand at writing books, uh, I eventually landing, landed doing these things as a hobby. So I enjoy it. Uh, Goans have been uh, my favorite subject because uh, growing up in Karachi, a Goan, uh, there were so many things that you know one observed. And, and eventually when you came to terms, you tried to figure out how to put all these things together. Uh, I'm pretty sure not too many of you uh, know the Goan history in Karachi uh, very well for two reasons. Number one, uh, not much has been written and archived about Goan history. And uh, number two, the interest to, to continue with Goan traditions have sort of wavered and, and tapered off to quite a great extent. There are a number of Goans living in Karachi still. I was in Karachi just about four years ago and before I moved to Canada. So uh, there are there are a number of things that I need to sort of highlight to this audience and in particular to the younger audiences, uh, those from the college and uh, living anywhere else and those who have not been to Karachi. Because whenever you talk about Karachi Goans, you always think of them from two perspectives. Goan Catholics in Karachi and Goan Christians in Pakistan. So a lot of clarity needs to come in as to this diaspora that has a 200 year history in that part of the world or rather that part of British India and before. So the reason uh, I put this book together was, was because I had collected a lot of data and uh, I had to put it together and, and finally it came along, Footprints on the Sands of Time. 
uh, and it has opened a kind of a Pandora's box to know uh, the history and how it all happened and how it evolved uh, into being a very prominent, eminent and influential community uh, in pre-partition and post-partition. So I've, I've put a presentation together, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I hope you're going to sort of uh, like it. I've tried my best because I believe that slides uh, that, that you can read, you can make your own assessment. It's a kind of a drone view of, of, of the subject matter of this webinar, and uh, which will uh, you know encourage you to sort of uh, have a number of questions uh, coming to your mind. So note those questions down and uh, you can always ask the questions uh, later on and all, or you could also email them to me. So Frida, I would like to go to my presentation right now. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Uh, do you see? Do you see my presentation? Yes, so we can see it. Uh, okay, I'll go. enlarge this now mm -hmm. to a full screen. Yes, do you have it there. Yes, yes, yes. All right. So uh, I'm going to speak for about twenty minutes, and then from there on, uh, we could sort of take it over, and Roland could take over rather. All right. So I've tried my best to put it together uh, with respect to what you have asked for as as the topic of the seminar. Uh, understanding Goa's out migration from the historical, sociological, philosophical perspective. And I've taken it step by step in a way so that uh, there's an understanding of, of what it what it has been and what is what it is to be a Goan in Karachi. Right? So so the Karachi connection. The out migration to Karachi. I've spelled the word Karachi that way because it was known that way uh, in the in the mid 1830s onwards. Was a result of Goans in Goa seeking economic sustenance, while on one hand, on the other hand rather, it was also economic freedom to explore business opportunities. So in my research, there were signs of Goans being present in this sleepy fishing town even before the British had annexed Karachi, the town, in 1843. And there was an, a kind of an instant connection for Goans uh, in, to, to, to possibly make Karachi future home. So before we go any further, the first slide, immediately after the first slide, I would like you to have a look at this slide on demographics for you to understand uh, a bigger picture of uh, how Goans lived, survived in this place called Karachi. British India, later becoming Karachi, Pakistan. So as per latest standing, which is uh, based on non-verified estimated data, Pakistan today is a country of 220 million people approximately, more or less uh, uh, plus and minus. So the blue part represents the majority uh, of the population, which, as you all know, are Muslims. And that little piece out there, the orange one, is the minorities, which is just about 3.5% uh, of the total population. You go down further to the gray part, 
you will find that there are other minorities and the yellow part which determines the number of Catholics. Rather, the gray part is, is the Christians, which means the Protestants, and the yellow part uh, are the Catholics. Further on, I will break down this figure so that you can understand as to the number uh, in terms of Catholics and the number in terms of Goan Catholics. So let's take the historical aspect of, uh, of this discussion. The migration of the Portuguese Goan. I've divided this section into four parts. The mid 19th century options in Portuguese Goa, issues and opportunities. Finding a way out of Goa. Chart a route with a known destination uh, in, in mind or maybe not, and eventually finding a place called Karachi and falling in love with it. So the first part of the historical section, the mid 19th century issues and opportunities. The Portuguese Hindu pedigree is raised as a Catholic subject. Portuguese Goa is in a fragmented economic and political condition. Livelihood in Portuguese Goa is difficult and the future looks very obscure. There is brisk Portuguese and British trade activity to and from East Africa during that time and ships are docking in in Goa and Bombay. Portuguese Goans see that seafaring is a new migratory option for, option for them. Although they did not have a clear destination in mind, many were looking for jobs and adventure. Finding a way out of Goa. The opportunities on Portuguese and British naval and trading ships that were docking in were requirements for clerks, cooks, butlers, bakers, carpenters, and so forth. Goans were hardworking and cooperative. There were no hang-ups. And those ships found them as able workers, and they went on board. There was a, another group of Goans who were adventurous. They were seeking a new life and possibly some business opportunities. They sailed from Goa to Bombay, but onward to where? Success beckoned those who were brave hearted and they sailed northwest. They left home and moved out of Goa. The outbound voyages took them to Bombay via sailboats. Their target destination is believed to be East African colonial settlements. And en route, sailing northwest, they find Karachi, a fishing village. This is before 1850 somewhere around 1820 or 30. And during that time, it is the Talpur era. There were Sindhi rulers who were ruling that part of uh, the continent. The British with the East India Company were also present in the region for more than a couple of centuries before that. Goan adventure, adventurers, when they landed there, 
they were tempted by Karachi's barren and dusty charm. So they explore and, and, and discover Karachi anywhere between 1800 and 20 or 30, right up to 1843, before the British. And what do they find in Karachi? They fall in love. The British by then had captured the territory of Sindh in 1839 and by virtue of that annexed the town of Karachi in 1842. There is an instant Portuguese Goan and British connection at that time. Once again, Goans are accepted as able, dependable workers by the new rulers. And we have the start of the 100 plus years of British Raj, which was known as British India, right up to independence in 1947. Those who found work felt there was no need to look beyond Karachi. And those who lived uh, and stayed back in Karachi East Africa as a destination did not come to their minds anymore. But there were others who were going there too. So could this town of Karachi be a new home for the diaspora? It seems so because late 19th century, some more Goan families from Goa started coming to Karachi. So from the sociological point of view, let's take the Goan eminence and influence that uh, I want to talk about. Again, I've put this section into different parts. The first phase from 1845 to 1875, that is British India Karachi, which was the post reconnaissance era. 1876 to 1925 was when they were nurturing their foresight, what we should be doing there, and also harnessing their lives. What should we do here socially, culturally? Then the next phase, 1926 to 1946, is a period of progress. That's where Goans were most eminent, influential, and there was a large number of inbound migrants coming into Karachi. Note the period, 1926 to 1946. In 47 is partition. Pakistan is born, and there are signs of a change of heart. Have a look at this graph. This will give you more or less an indication as to the highs and lows of Goan migration uh, into Karachi. On the left side, you can see the population estimates. Like I said, Pakistan is a country of 220 million. Non-Muslims are about 3.5 million. From the 3.5 million, as you can see, the Christian population is 2.2 million, of which Protestants are 1.2 million and Catholics are 1 million. And from the 1 million Catholics, Goan Catholics, as we stand today, are just about 8,000. Goans at the peak of their power, influence, and eminence in Karachi was that period between 1926 and 1947, and from 1947 to 1953, when they hit a maximum of about approximately, give or take, margin of error here and there, 16,000 plus or minus. Why 1953 when the graph goes down is because that is the time when it has been recorded that the first Goan moved out of Karachi westwards, possibly to England on the way to, to Montreal. And this is explained a little further in the following slides. Let's go back. So 1845 to 1875, British India, Karachi. What is happening in that town? The missionary chaplains who had come with the British uh, 
forces, uh, mostly the Carmelites and Jesuits, they are at work. They built places of worship and educational institutions. Some of the largest institutions like St. Patrick's and St. Joseph's, which are now more than 150 years old, were set up during that time. Early Gons are active. They open small shops, small businesses, and many of them seek employment. The next phase is 1876 to 1925, where they were nurturing as to their foresight to what to do and how to live as a community. They come together like Goans do. They are church services. They are social gatherings. They get school. They establish larger business concerns. Some of them became so large that they were the biggest in India. For example, the Indian Life Assurance Company, Ilako. And more Goans started arriving during this period. You must also note during this time that the early Gones who came here, they they were they lived in in congested areas, you know, and many of them lived in woods. From 1926 to 1946, Gones are progressive, eminent, and influential. They establish residential townships and complexes. They assume civic responsibilities. And in 1946, a Goan is a mayor of the city. Many Goan boys and girls, they opt to join the priesthood and religious congregations. And the first of Goan priests are sent to the papal seminary in Kandy. And then Pakistan happens in 1947. There seems to be that there was a change of heart because that's where Goans started to believe that it is a new ideology that they are, they are encountering and is it what they would like to be a part of? The winds of change are beginning to happen. Goans suddenly feel that they are like square pegs in wrong holes. By then, they were well established. Yet, in 1953, around that time, 52, 53, 54, not before or after, mm -hmm. is when the first of the Goans seek migration to the West. From the Goan point of view, it's the second migration because uh, their, their fathers and forefathers were the first ones to come from Goa. And within a decade, this move becomes a kind of exodus. So let's take the philosophical section of this presentation as to the impact of the Goan influence, Goan presence, Goan life uh, in Karachi. I've called it the gifts of Goan benevolence. Goans and the church. Goans and education. Goan professionals and business persons. Goan sports persons. Goan musicians and the arts. Goans and the church. They joined the priesthood and religious congregations during that time. They provided for the spiritual and temporal needs of the community. They took over reins from departing missionaries. They set up religious and charitable institutions. They nurtured indigenous vocations for church of the future. The church of the future is the church that we see what is in Pakistan now, which I'm going to talk about a little while from now. The Goan hierarchy, which still remains, and today's cultural transformation of the church. Now, remember one thing that 
Goans in Karachi, as Goan Catholics, a part of the Catholic community, which I've earlier spoken about, the Catholic community, we all grew up as, or rather grew up and were known as the English speaking Catholic community of Pakistan. So the English speaking Catholic community of Pakistan and Karachi as such were Goans, Anglo Indians, and the Tamils, Madrasis. We all grew up together as one community. We all lived together. We all attended church services together, played together, studied together, worked together. Not quite in other diasporas. This is quite unique of Karachi as, as a diaspora destination for Goans. From the education point of view, it were the Jesuits and the Franciscans who operated church and parish schools. Goans had joined missionary parish, parish schools as students from 1850s onwards, which were then run by the Carmelites. They took up teaching jobs in the first half of the 20th century after having done their schooling from the missionary schools in the latter part of the 19th century. They did well as students, took up further education, and Goan teachers became one of the greatest influence on those who were enrolled in missionary schools in Karachi. The missionary schools in Karachi today have about 15% Goan students and 85% non-Goans, as in Muslims and everybody else. In the latter part, they took over educational institutions as principal and administrators. And they also opened new schools and so forth. From a professionals and business person's point of view, Goans provided a solid base for education and medical services in Pakistan. In my book, I have listed more than 100 Goan doctors before and after partition who gave the city of Karachi the much needed medical professionals when it needed most. At the time of independence, before and a little after, Goans were top-notch engineers, architects, and lawmakers. They served the country in the, in the services, army, air force, and navy. They were successful bankers, insurers, civic counselors, administrators. Many of them set up large and medium-scale business enterprises. They opened shops. Sportspersons, always very close to the Goan heart. There are some names that I will be taking. There's some information that I'd be, uh, which I might be sharing with you, which, which might come to you for the first time. Karachi Goans produced all India stalwarts and wizards of the game. Goans were so good in, in their favorite game, which was hockey, and representing schools like St. Patrick, they invariably won the all India tournaments. And that meant a lot because India at that time was a global phenomenon. What Karachi gave to India as in sports administration is amazing. Anthony DeMello is the founder of the BCCI in India, the Brabon Stadium the Ranji Trophy, and the chief organizer of the first Asian Games in New Delhi in 1958. And at the Pakistan end, there's Oswald Nazareth, who became Pakistan's first hockey manager at Pakistan's first participation in the Olympic Games in 1948. 
the first goan ever to represent india in olympics was a goan from karachi peter paul fernandes at the 1936 olympic games in berlin and then milton de mello in 1948 and jack brito in 1952 and there were other national champions and so forth musicians and the art arts i'm sure everybody's heard of mickey kurea and his 31 year representation performance at the taj uh, in bombay mickey was an old karachi boy stain path student karachi had a great interest in 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 stage performances and karachi goans are very proud of their performances uh in 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 those savoy operators especially the mikado and several others goan composers and music directors were plenty but i specifically mentioned tolly fonseca for one very special reason tolly fonseca was the one who wrote the music for the national anthem of pakistan pakistan national anthem was finalized in 1953 from 1947 to 1953 we did not have an anthem they were in the, it was in the works the anthem is in the name of composer Emma Chagla and the lyrics um I'm forgetting his name I will come to me very soon but it was Tolly Fonseca who put the composition of the music together for the brass band that eventually played the anthem the arts I miss the arts a lot because I grew up watching Uh, a number of theatres that took place uh, in in Karachi. Goan in the nightclubs and discotheque bands, Goans as crooners, and and several other professions. I have particularly mentioned photographers. I mentioned Sequera and Sons because of I Sequera and Sons, Ignatius Sequera and Sons. Why is it so special? I Sequera. and sons the photographers were the favorite photographers of the founder of the country mr mohammad ali jinnah and his very first picture that he did which was to be used on jinnah's passport and as his official portrait when the new country came into being was clicked in the studios of sequera and sons and then of course uh, you've spoken about the karachi goan association and the and the goan union these are the two goan clubs which have been there for for many many years karachi goan association is more than 125 years and the goan union is almost that much <clears throat> so So what I've come to over here in 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 this little uh, bird's eye view or kind of a drone's drone view is for you to to basically understand how the out migration from from Goa into a place uh, called Karachi and how Goans adopted Karachi as a home for themselves for their families made a name and uh, and and possibly did not want to go back to Goa. because if they had decided that okay this is this is it we we want to move on they did not go back to goa but but they but they chose to move to places like like uh, the uk and the us and canada and so forth right so so here's my take what were the positives and negatives of the out migration from the positives point of view they embraced opportunities they remained connected to the church they acquired good education they raised families without inhibition they achieved their goals and ambitions 
led a happy life socially and culturally. And in 1947, they became naturalized citizens of the new country. From the negatives point of view, when they first came and, and, and came across the British who were by then coming into that part of the world and making Karachi as a garrison town, uh, building churches, building roads, building networks, building uh, the harbor because trade activity by then was was a key factor in in in, in the british influence uh, of that place goans also did not care much about konkani most spoke in konkani of course the the, the different strata of of, of goans who came to to karachi uh, unfortunately, there was a disparity in haves and have-nots. I cannot overlook this because this was a reality uh, in, in pre-partition uh, Karachi. Post-partition Karachi was more confined to ghetto living, as in living around churches, parishes, uh, restricting uh, from themselves from taking part in mainstream activities and so forth and gradually uh, goans lost most of their identity there was also some kind of segregation and 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 you know non-integration of cultures and non-integration of of communities which which were evidently quite clear during uh, around that time so, so these are my. This is my take from from the positives and negatives point of view, and I would now like to sort of uh, conclude by thanking uh, all of you uh, for listening into this uh, discussion. Um, I'm sure you will have questions to ask. Um, the book that I've put together, uh, which is called Footprints on the Sands of Time. Uh, how do I get out of this? Uh, Frida, can you can you get me out of this? So you, you stop sharing. We can yeah, see. Yeah, I stop sharing. So you stop sharing. So we can see you now. Oh, you can see me. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. Uh, all right. So uh, let me let me just show you a glimpse of of the book that I've put together. This is the book, all right. Uh, it has got about 400 pages. And, and this more or less sort of uh, puts together history. Uh, it has got a chronology of, of milestones from 1820 all the way to 2020. And uh, not too many books have been published. This is only for the information and, and uh, you know, of, of younger goans uh, in, in parts of the world who would like to know a little bit of about Karachi Goans. It's made for the universities, for the colleges, or for research centers and so forth. So that something about the Karachi Goans is in, in print form uh, for future generations to take on onwards. Uh, that's about it, Frida. Thank you, sir. That it was a pleasure listening to you. It was truly an enriching and uh, informative session, very insightful session. Uh, I'm sure our participants will have a lot of questions, a lot of comments. I invite uh, you to put them down in the chat box. We will take them after the next session. Thank you, sir. Um, You're welcome. Our next speaker for the day is Mr. Roland D'Souza. We are truly privileged to have him with, uh, with Taz addressing us today. Mr. D'Souza is a Goan who traces his roots to Porvarim. He was born in Karachi, Pakistan in 1951. He's an electrical engineer and a part owner of a 34-year-old engineering firm. He has been active in social action, including Seheri, Citizens for Better Environment, a non-profit group tackling issues of the environment. He's also been active in the Human Rights Commission of Pakistan, a non-profit fighting 
uh, violations of human rights in the country. He too is speaking to us from across the Atlantic, that is Los Angeles, USA, where I suppose it is around uh, 10 o'clock in the night. We are incre incredibly honored to have you with us, sir. May I request you to take over? Sir, you will need to unmute yourself. Technical problems. We can see you, sir. We can see you. We can hear you. Yeah, but I've got to get my presentation on, on board. Yes. So we can see your screen. Yes, yes, we can see your screen. You can see the screen with the uh, title of the of the. It's a PDF. Yes. That's right. Yeah, That's right. yeah. Okay. So can we start on this? Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Go ahead. All right. You can hear me and you can see the screen? Yes, sir. We can hear you. We can see your screen. All right. The presentation today that I make has a number of overlaps with what Benin said himself. But uh, I am hoping to uh, have a slightly different tack. We will start off. Sir, you clicked on stop sharing, so you are back to you'll have to share again. Okay, this is getting a little complicated.
Can you still see the screen? Hello? No, sir, not yet. You will have to say uh, present screen, share screen. So if you say share screen and then click on the PDF, it would come. Uh, yes, we could actually have the question and answers for uh, Mr. Menon. I request Janet, if uh, she could facilitate the questions. Thank you, Frida. Uh, so if... If any participants have any questions, can directly ask uh, Samanan, or uh, you can post on the comment section, on the chat section. Uh, Samanan, we have first uh, one question on the chat section uh, by Ms. Uh, my Ma'am Pamela. Uh, understand there was Karachi radio service started before the, 90, uh, the 1950s. If yes, did Goans contribute? Mr. Menon, you'll have to unmute yourself. You are currently mute. Got it. OK. Right. So uh, so radio uh, in Pakistan uh, um, had different sections you know, uh, for English uh, listeners, right? whether it was news or uh, favorite songs and so forth. So, so Goans and Anglo-Indians, they were both quite uh, active on radio during that time, yeah. Thank you, sir. Any more questions from the participants? Could you directly unmute and raise a question. So there's a question here if there was a direct ship service from Goa to Karachi before independence. So, so yes, there were. Uh, there were uh, services between Goa and Karachi. Uh, most of these ships uh, were, were, were trading ships, cargo ships, uh, passenger ships. And uh, many of these ships had, had Goans uh, on board as, um, as passengers uh, and, and also as workers, uh, Tarvotis, they call them, right? Thank you, sir. Uh, there's one more question uh, from Mr. Kit. Is the book available on online e-commerce website? Well, the book is just about uh, six months uh, old now. Uh, it is, uh, the first print run was was made available, and so that has been sold out. And just last week, I got a second print run, uh, which I intend distributing and not to 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 book stalls and booksellers and so forth, but to to institutions and organizations. Uh, once this phase is done, which will probably take about a month or so. 
uh, after that, uh, the book uh, will come on either Amazon or other platforms. Thank you, sir. There's one more question from Mr. Frederick. Could you comment on the visa mm -hmm. issued, uh, issues being faced by Karachi Goans, amongst others? As such, uh, uh, visa issues between the two countries is, is usually dependent on, on the bilateral agreements made by, by both the countries. Um, it has never been an issue uh, as far as travel for Goans uh, from Karachi to go to Goa, uh, particularly at, at least in the last 30 years or so, because um, Goans were issued uh, visa to go to Goa uh, in groups as large as 300 at the same time. Uh, but you know, whenever things happen between the two countries, there's there's always a stoppage or or a block right now. So currently, uh, I don't believe uh, issue uh, visas are being issued, Frederick. Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Frida Tavares, can we continue, or should we uh, start with? Yes, the yes, I think we could continue. Uh, sir Roland, if you are if you are ready. So, is he? Has he? Uh, give Give me a couple of minutes. Yes. Okay. Give me a couple of minutes. I still have a technical problem. Okay. Okay. So All right. We'll be back. More questions. Okay. We'll continue with a few more questions. Okay, okay sir. We we'll continue. We we'll take the next question. Um, this next question is from Miss Velusha. Does the Goan diaspora suffer a setback being a minority in Karachi? What is done to preserve them? No, not at all. No, no, there there are no setbacks uh, with regard to Goans in Karachi. All right, uh, Goans are held even today in in very high esteem for the simple reason that uh, they have been in education, they have been uh, in in medicine, and uh, they are basically good workers. I mean, if 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 you take a general office, and if uh, they are looking for a good hard-working uh, person to work for them. Uh, the preference uh, for a Goan who is well-educated uh, is, is there. So no, no such issues at all. Thank you, sir. There's a question from Father Salema. How, do, how was the local uh, local's relationship with the Goan community? Excellent. Yeah, excellent, Father. Yeah. And there's, there's absolutely no doubt about it. Uh, like I said, you see, the Goan influence uh, has been such uh, on the people of Karachi and Pakistan in general uh, has been huge. So much so that even though they may not be eminent and influential today, what they have left behind as their footprint uh, is what makes Goans uh, a very accepted community in, in, in the country and in, in Karachi. Thank you, sir. Thank you, much for that beautiful slide. Thanks. So the, let's take the next question. Um, uh, next question is from Ms. Taman. Uh, why did you leave Karachi? I haven't left Karachi as yet. <laughs> Karachi will uh, remains in my heart and it will always be there in my heart. I spent 60 years of my life in Karachi. So where will Karachi go? Yes, uh, next question is from Ms. Poonam. Looking at the present scenario in Pakistan, how are the social conditions for the Goan diaspora? See, the present conditions of Pakistan is would be the same as in, in any other country. All right, Pakistan, for for various reasons, for good, bad, indifferent reasons, is 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 always uh, prominently projected in, in all parts of the world, and it, it it excites many people everywhere, and and I'm sure Goans uh, would believe that uh, everything that they read and hear and see. Uh, about Pakistan uh, might be affecting Goans, but, but that's not the case at all. 
Christians in general are, are protected um, by law, by the constitution, and, and the country will, will always make sure that in no way that uh, Christians as such uh, are persecuted. I'm using the word persecuted because uh, it has different connotations. It is used very easily everywhere uh, by you know people who would like to write or say or do things or, or put somebody against a wall. But uh, persecution per se is has got many different connotations. Um, Goans as such, no persecution at all. Thank you, sir. Uh, let's take the next question uh, by Mr. Jules. Is it an issue for Goans living abroad? Um, again, I didn't get the question. Uh, the question is, is it an issue for the Goans living abroad? Mm, no. What? No, no issues at all. Yeah. OK, let's take the next question by Mr. Ashley. What did the Goans learn from their Karachi experience? Does it fit in with the anti-outsider feeling in Goa today? I don't know whether I've got these questions right, but uh, the learnings from being a Karachi Goan is, is that uh, we didn't live uh, in, in Karachi uh, as, as Goans with any baggage, right? We lived a very carefree life. Uh, we enjoyed uh, ourselves. Goans enjoy themselves uh, as as a community, uh, and and those are the good lessons. I mean, we know that we have left behind, or uh, and we we leave behind a good impression on on people who come in contact with us who are not from our community, and and they have great regard for us. Thank you, sir. Uh, next question is from uh, Mr. Frederick. Are they uh, Goan Hindus among the Karachi diaspora? Yes, a few that I knew of. Uh, the most famous is the Raikar jewelers uh, and, and a couple of others who, who were sort of uh, working in, in, in some shops which I knew of. Non-Catholics, non but, uh, but Hindu, Hindu Goans. I can see Roland has got his presentation, so let him do it. Yes, yes. Uh, Mr. Menon, we will continue with the question and answer sure, session at sure. the end of Mr. Roland's session. Uh, sir, may I request you to take over? You can unmute yourself if you, yeah, I think right now you are muted. If you unmute yourself, And then go back to that W. Uh, go back to the WPM. Uh, I don't know if he's speaking as you. Uh, if you could just say a few words, I we can't. No, I think you are muted. You are muted at the moment. Okay. Oh, yes, we can hear you. We can hear you. You can hear me now. Okay, just a minute. Okay, put on your video too. Hit, hit the play button on WPS. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, sir, we can hear you. All right, good, good. So let's start. Sorry for that confusion. How does the Bardes go on found? How about Bardes go on found him in Karachi? We are starting this presentation with the Goan in migration. 
first to find out how the goans got from paradise to goa this is a map that has been prepared by the national geographic and it shows how all of humanity came out of the rift valley and spread through the earth now if you look at one of these passages it came up through saudi arabia through karachi although karachi didn't exist at that time and eventually down into goa now this is one of the uh, routes that uh, that uh, the goans used to get from the rift valley into goa if people had stayed in the rift valley who knows what would have happened for instance there was one of our cousins who stayed over there in the country that eventually became kenya and one of his relatives eventually became president of the united states there was another relative of his who came up and went into germany and he became president later in america his name was trump we landed up in goa and the story of man's migration from africa into uh, goa is given in a book called the last prabhu which i would very strongly recommend that all goans read when we talk about out migration from goa basically there were three phases one as menin pointed out was in the 16th and 17th centuries and this was based on an attempt to avoid forced conversions and escape the holy inquisition it was at the when the inquisition was stopped in 1812 that other things began to happen the british came to india and uh it was while they were in india as can be seen from the next uh, slide that the french came into goa the the british came into goa to prevent the french from taking over and stayed in goa for approximately uh 10 years 1797 to 1813 there is today a british cemetery in donapala at that time the british got familiar with the goan and when they left in 19 in 1813 a number of the british went as camp followers number of the goans left as as camp followers so the first movement of the goans into british into uh, karachi was around 1820 in 1839 the east india company brought in an army and occupied karachi as a base for a war against afghanistan with them came more goans In 1843, General Napier conquered Sind and made Karachi the capital of Sind. Now, with General Napier, there were a number of Irish regiments, the Irish Fusiliers, who built Saint Patrick's uh, Church, put up a small church. which is now a part of st joseph's convent and is uh, a hall when the british 
were in Karachi from 1861 to 1865, they started to export cotton. Now, the, all the entries which have been highlighted in yellow out here show the various factors that encouraged Goans to leave Goa and look for jobs in other areas like India, Africa, and places like that. Considering that we've lost some time, I am not going to describe the various events that happened in between when the schools and when things are built, but uh, just concentrate on what were the factors that encouraged the migration of Goans from Goa to a developing town. The Suez Canal opened up in 1969, in 1869, and the trade with Europe and Britain improved. By now, Goans who had got their relatives called from Goa to work in Karachi uh, moved into other cities to run things like the railways, the police. The Karachi Harbour was developed in 1873. And by now, Goans were working in the port, the railways, the police, the port, the customs, the municipality, the cantonment, and in private enterprise. Very interestingly, in 1878, there was an Anglo-Portuguese treaty for trade and a railway connection between Goa and the rest of British India. The railway in Karachi was also developing. It was linked to Lahore and then to Delhi. All of these things got Goans interested and the movement of Goans from Goa to Karachi uh, kept on uh, increasing. By now, the Goans who had been there for perhaps 40 or 50 years had developed their uh, business acumen and started setting up enterprises. One of the biggest that was set up in 1892 was the Indian Life Assurance Company. It was founded by Goan businessmen and uh, did extremely well in the city of Karachi. Along with that, a companion organization done by the same entrepreneurs was in 1998, the Indian Goan Flower Mill, which was in, established in Cincinnati town. A Cincinnati town was a habitation that was set up on the edge of the city. The city, by this time, the uh, end of the century, has started experiencing cholera epidemics, a lot of con congestion. And with finance from the ILACO, ILACO, these businessmen set up Cincinnati Town. Cincinnati Town eventually developed into a habitation that had more than 100 bungalows occupied by Goans. It was a premier housing area in Karachi at that time when Karachi had a population of perhaps 110,000 people. The numbers that you see on the right of this chart are the population of Karachi at various points in the time. There was the building of the Christ the King uh, monument. St. Lawrence's Church was built in Cincinnati town. You will be seeing later certain photographs of St. Lawrence's town. And the Lloyd Barrage in Sakkar, in Sindh, was completed, which threw, threw, uh, threw open the farmland of Sindh for cultivation of cotton and wheat. AGA was built, and its name was changed eventually from the GPA, the Goan Portuguese Association, to the Karachi Goan Association. When World War II started, Karachi became an important supply base for Allied forces and a ship repair port. This uh, engendered greater migration of uh, educated people and technical people into Karachi. 
Hussein De Silva was, was another entrepreneur who set up a construction company just about the time of partition, partition and did extremely well for perhaps 30 or 40 years. In 1947, Pakistan, who at that time had a population of 32 million, was created with its capital at Karachi. Now, this is a history of the city of Karachi and the Goans from 1820 right up to 1947. Today, the population of Karachi is 28 million, which is something like a 70-fold increase in Karachi. Now, the advantages enjoyed by the Goans while they were in the Karachi were that they got on very well with the British. One is they had a exposure to European culture. They were Christians, Catholics, and there were people among them who had professions. They knew the English language. They were familiar with culture. And they were perceived as being honest, hardworking, and conscientious. Therefore, the British who are having difficulty in dealing with the Hindus and the Muslims saw these minority groups as being a buffer between them and the management of the general populace of India. So the Goans occupied positions of responsibility and trust and rose in government service and in the commercial sector. When the partition of India took place, while rumblings were increasing, the actual event probably took everybody by surprise. India promised that India would be a secular country. Nehru promised that uh, India would be a secular country. Jinnah assured with minorities that in Pakistan, they would be free and equal citizens. Both of these things somehow have not come out to be true. But as at that time, the Goans were not able to look into the future, most of them were well settled and decided to stay. Many local servicemen, people who lived in Goans who lived in Karachi, but were working in the Indian army, chose and opted for Pakistan and came and settled in Karachi. The Goan Catholic. The Goan Catholic is a man of great Catholic fervor. This is the list of activities that the Goan Catholic was exposed to in the parishes of Karachi. Most of the Goans lived in the center of the city. And as the city expanded and uh, Punjabi Christians and Catholics came in from up country, they settled in Kachi Abadis and in uh, sectors that were far from, uh, from Sadar, which was considered the center of town. Now, the Goans got into sodalities, they got into the legion, they got into choirs, they got into social welfare societies. And the Sacred Heart picture was something that was a must in every house. The Karachi Goan Association. The Karachi Goan Association was an area that had dances, Sunday jam sessions, concerts, operators, musicals, card games, tournaments, all kinds of sports and indoor games. And they had a bar. Now, before 1977, the KGA was a great fun place for entire families. I remember going to the KGA on a Sunday with my parents. We could run in the corridors. People sat down. They had stuff to drink and eat. They met friends. They danced. But in 1997, when prohibition was introduced by the government, by Sulfikar Ali Bhutto, Liquor could only be had at home by non-Muslims. The club was not allowed to maintain a bar. 
that's spelled the death knell of most of the interesting activities of the KGA. How did the Christians and the Goans particularly feel as minorities in Pakistan? When Pakistan came into being, the minorities were 23% of the population. Now, at that time, this included East Pakistan, which eventually became Bangladesh. There were a large amount of Hindus out there. And there were a large amount of Hindus and Sikhs in Pakistan. But a lot of these people moved out. They went to India. Bangladesh was separated. And today, as pointed out by Ben earlier, the minorities consist of only 3.5% of the population, with Christians at 1.3 million and Catholics at about 1.2. The Goans, out of these, out of these number probably eight to 10,000. After independence, Muslims began to assert themselves and Goans found that the jobs that they normally got the facilities that they were had access to were not that easy to get anymore. And this is probably one of the reasons why people started looking to greener pastures in the Anglosphere. That is the countries that spoke English, Australia, Canada, America. They also went for jobs in the Middle East. Uh, basically, the Goans did not experience great discrimination because they were a middle class community. Uh, the poor Christians, like the Punjabis who lived in uh, villages, in rural areas, or in Katki Abadis in the city, would have a different tale to tell. But still, there was a problem. Uh, women had a very difficult time with clothing and with attention on the streets. For instance, in 1926, the Christ the King procession was had was held every year in uh, St. Patrick's. And this wound through the streets of Southern. But it had to be stopped in 1967, when a lot of people started coming from outside Karachi and living in Karachi. They used to come to watch and they used to leer at the women who at that time were wearing dresses. Over the years, of course, the Goans have adopted some form of uh, dress, Pakistani dress. They either wear pants or they wear uh, shalwar kameez and things are better. But the cultural differences still exist. Now, some of this is the fault of the Goans in the sense that the Goldens did not learn the language. They did not learn the culture. They maintained themselves as semi-foreigners in Pakistan. Out-migration from Karachi started in the 50s, accelerated in the 70s after Ziaul Haq's Islamization, and it continues today. So although there have been many more Goans born from uh, the peak uh, of their uh, number in uh, which Menin pointed out at 15 to 18,000 uh, the number has actually reduced a few Goans did migrate to Pakistan after partition they got married to Pakistani Goans and a few Goans left Karachi to go and live either in Bombay or in Goa. I presume that a lot of you must be aware of such people. The Goans have been involved in service to Pakistan. Some in the army, Navy and Air Force. The educational sphere has specially had competent and dedicated Goans working as teachers and principals and their products have been leaders in society. Some of them are listed here, Supreme Court judges, prime ministers, presidents, and prominent businessmen. 
The medical field has also seen a lot of service from Goans, nurses, doctors, working in Catholic and Christian hospitals. I will now try and show you some photographs of some of the things that we have mentioned. St. Patrick's Cathedral, shown over here in the background, is the cathedral of the Archbishop of Karachi. It was built in 1978, uh, 1878. In front of it is the Christ the King monument, which was built in 1931. The church below is the one that was built in the in the Cincinnati town. It was built in 1931. You notice it has a unique design. It looks like a, you might mistake it for a masjid. But I think that was done deliberately. It was designed by a Jesuit priest, Father Heras, who eventually went to uh, India. We have mentioned the Ilako in Karachi, which came into being in 1892. The building at the top right hand is the Ilako House. It is today a heritage building. The Indian flour mills, shown on the left, was constructed in Cincinnati town, eventually sold and has been demolished to build more houses in the Garden East area. There were a multiplicity of Catholic organizations in Karachi. Here are pictures from two of them. One is the Catholic Students' Union. Now, uh, it was open to all Catholics, but probably 95% of the uh, members were Goans. The St. Lawrence's Welfare Society in uh, Garden East. There was this. This priest here is Monsignor Muniz. I think he came to Karachi from Goa, was assigned to come and work here. Cincinnati Town. This was like a typical house in Cincinnati Town. That is work to bring in the, uh, the breeze that was available in Garden East. This was one of the first houses that was put up there. The clubs, Benin's already mentioned them, the Goan Union which is in Sada, and uh, the Karachi Government Association building, originally the GPA building, which is also in the containment area. This program here is taken from a uh, uh, operetta, the Nicaro, the Gilbert and Sullivan Nicaro, uh, and it has the names of all the Goans who acted and took part and organized it. I understand the organizers of this webinar are going to make the uh, proceedings available to you so you can look at some of these things in greater detail. Just before I close, I would like to introduce you to my family. My grandfather was Celeriano Braz de Souza. He was born in 1879 in Purvuri, migrated to Karachi in 1900, went back to Purvuri to marry Theodore Linda de Lima. If you see her date of birth is 1893, so she was 14 years younger than he was. They had seven children. I'll show you those children later. The eldest one was my father. He decided, like his father, that he would also marry somebody from Goa. So he married Olinda de Souza from Porvori. They had five children. You'll get to see them too. I married Victoria Menezes, a Goan in Karachi. By this time, it was difficult getting Goan brides from Goa because you couldn't get a visa to go there. They have three children, all boys. This is a picture of young Salerian and his friends in Karachi. If you notice below the picture, there's Ignatius Sequera written here. 
Ignatius Sequeira was was uh, mentioned by uh, Benin as one of the ace photographers of Karachi. So that's that's my grandfather out there with some friends of his. And this is my grandfather at a Goan picnic at Mangopir in the year 1902. This is my grandfather out here. These were interesting picnics. They put out a sheet on the floor and they had wine bottles and all sorts of stuff. He went back in 1908 and married Theodore Linda. They lived in St. Lawrence's Parish. And this is a photograph of St. Lawrence's Church and the parishioners, a group picture that was taken around the year 1935. Now, all of this is before Pakistan came into being. This is a picture of my uh, grandfather and his family. That's my father up there. This is Philip. Philip was somebody, Philip and another brother, uh, Valley, yeah, were in India when partition took place. So they stayed over there. Philip was an engineer, lived in Bandra. Bali was a Jesuit a priest. And there were two other priests in the family. This was Tony, who was uh, in the seminary at the time. This is Francis, who uh, went to the seminary probably three or four years later. That's my grandfather, my grandmother. There was one girl in the one girl in the family. Oh. Sorry. Yeah, one girl in the family. And this photograph was taken around 1937 or so. Now, Bali wrote a very interesting article, which is included in Menon's book, Pakistan's gift to the Gujarat Jesuits. He lists, this isn't the whole article, the article is uh, is available in the book and I presume that eventually you'll see it. But I have taken from that the list of the 14 Jesuits who came from one town, that's Karachi, and one school, that's St. Patrick's School, and worked in India. So this was a gift of Karachi to to the Jesuits in Gujarat. There were bishops, there were school principals and founders, there were professors, college principals, parish priests, principals, secretary St. Xavier's College. The last of them was uh, my uncle Valley, who wrote this article in 2012 and died in 2019 in Gujarat. My father and his marriage in Goa. My grandfather with myself and my sister. This is a picture of the five of us taken in the, in the US when uh, we came to visit them. My, my siblings migrated much earlier. This is a picture of my wedding, a very small wedding. We had only 16 people. And this is a, a picture of my uh, sons taken in Karachi in 2009. I hope I have been able to give you uh, a sampling and a taste for how the Goans came about to leave their homeland and settle in a desert in a strange place that had initially only a population of 14,000 that increased to 450,000 when it was made Pakistan and has increased now to 28 million in one city. These are the books that have a lot of information about Goa, the Goans who have come, uh, who left and came away, and the people who came to Karachi. Thank you very much.
thank you sir your sharing your detailed sharing of the details of your family the pictographic narrative of, that you give us truly gives us an insight into the lives of goans in karachi uh, we are really honored with your with your presentation i before we continue with the question answer round a reminder to all participants a link to the feedback form will be given at the end of the session uh, at the end of the webinar and you will fill, fill out this feedback form and which will then generate participation certificates without any further ado let us move to the question answer round i request ms janet araujo to take over thank you ms rita tawaris um hello sir uh, manan and sir ronald did i lost the questions <laughs> uh sir manan some of the questions you have already answered on the chat section would you like to readdress them again you can call me manan when you say sir manan i feel i've got the ob <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't matter anyway come again uh so do you like to re, um, want to readdress the question because you have already answered on the chat section so would you like to readdress them no 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 i mean as as i can see the questions i'm answering them but if anybody has questions that you know want me to answer in front of sure uh, there was one question uh, paula uh, if there are any names of women achievers in different fields from when uh, the karachi settlers take women folk across and how did they travel did the goans intermingle and marry non goans well there have been many women uh, achievers uh, i mean i couldn't name all of them as such i'll have to think uh, uh, over um the other one was what about traveling uh, from when uh, the karachi settlers take women folk across and how did they travel did the goans intermingle and uh, marry non goans no there was very little intermingling uh, outside the community so uh, not many have married uh, outside the the, the goan community but today uh, today there is marriages between uh, various different uh, you know uh, christian groups so that's all right yeah uh, the next question is from uh, mr james uh were there any goans in pakistan army navy or air force yeah sure there were uh, at the time of independence uh, from the air force point of view those who had joined the royal air force continued their work with with the pakistan air force uh, same thing with the army and and the navy roland's uncle was a commander in pakistan navy so yes there were thank you sir uh, there's one more question from mr frederick uh, when did the turning point come for the goans in the city did it come about with the islamization in the 90s uh, general zia etc assuming that things changed at some point as in many parts of the globe and migration centers uh, well when may i may I, uh, yeah sure does uh, the turning point i don't think was any one turning point and there were many reasons one of the first reasons is that the goans enjoyed Uh, such a lot of advantage under the british that the minute the british left uh, these things started changing all right uh, and they felt that they were now being discriminated against before the british uh, before uh, pakistan came into being the goans were being positively discriminated against in the sense that they were being given things that they might not have got under an equal field right uh, so that's one reason in pakistan the fervor for islam started increasing now that put the uh, the uh, christians in a very difficult situation so there are these two factors and if you look at the timing of these the first is the, the minute the british left which is in 1947 and the second is in in the mid 70s when uh ziaul uh, haq came so it's at that time that things started moving but today it is not only the goans who want to leave karachi pakistan uh if you can enjoy a good life uh, i'm sure that more than half of pakistan's 
population would be happy to get on a plane and go to Canada or to Australia or to America or things like that. It's just that they don't get the chance to do so. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir Manan, would you like to speak anything regarding the same question? Well, uh, you know, uh, for, for some reason, uh, I've always felt that uh, as Goans, it was our responsibility, our duty, and our understanding to know uh, who we are and, and, and where we are going to flourish, whether we want to or we don't want to. And from that point of view, uh, it was important for Goans to understand that they were no different from anybody else as minorities in that country. Pakistan was always made to be an Islamic country. And it has become and it will remain an Islamic country uh, at all times, as in India being a Hindu country. So uh, it was, uh, the onus was on Goans how to sort of adapt and, uh, and, and carry on with what they want to do uh, in a country that they had themselves called a home. So, uh, so factually and historically and uh, as God said, Pakistan has been a home for Goans for that many years. So, uh, the, the tipping point, as Freddie would like to know, Frederick would like to know, is, is nothing unusual. I mean, it's uh, in one of my in one of my writings, I've called Goans as being nomadic. I mean, if they don't like uh, some things going in their favor, they want to just, I don't want to play the game, I want to move on kind of uh, phenomena, right? So, so if, if Go was not good, move to East Africa, move to Karachi. If Karachi is not good, East Africa is not good. If Idi Amin throws you out, you go to another country and then you come to land in Canada, you land in, in USA and so forth. So so it's, 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 it's a very debatable question. But uh, Pakistan being safe for Goans, uh, I, would, I would vouch for it. Yes, it is safe for Goans. Thank you, sir. Uh, there's one more question from Ms. Carmen. Uh, what led your family to migrate to Karachi? I think it's for both the speakers. You wouldn't go ahead. Uh, uh, as I pointed out in the uh, first or second slide that I put in, uh, the reasons for leaving Goa are many. Uh, one is to escape uh, the uh, religious strictures that were being uh, imposed. The second was the economic uh, situation. The, the economy of Goa was uh, in very bad condition. And uh, people needed to find uh, means of uh, earning a living. It's something like happens, in, uh, happens today or happened uh, over the last 30 or 40 years in India and Pakistan where people left to go and work in the Middle East. Now, they had no intention at that time of uh, staying in the Middle East and the rules and regulations are that you can't stay over there. But I'm sure that when uh, my uh, grandfather left, he may not have wanted to stay there. He may have just gone there to earn a living, uh, get some money and perhaps come back. In fact, I am aware that he did try to go back. He talked to his wife, my grandmother. And uh, he says, let's go back and uh, live in Goa. This is after he got uh, he retired. But my grandmother by then had all her children in around her. And she wanted to stay with her children rather than go back to Goa, where she would be separated from her children. The children were working over there. They were doing a lot of things over there. They were young. So. Uh, this, this is what I think happened with my family. Any more questions? 
question. Uh, there's one more question from Mr. Ashley. Uh, can you tell uh, some more about the toil steers of the Goans in Karachi before they came became mid class professionals? Uh, I believe that the Goans who uh, came came into Karachi. Can you hear me? Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. yes. Okay. Uh, the girls who came into Karachi initially, that means from uh, the beginning of the 1800, for a number of years, were uh, not that well educated, right? And they were working in menial jobs. Now, because they were of the same religion as the uh, British, the British probably treated them more kindly. Uh, schools were set up and their children went to these schools. Some of the first things that happened in the uh, 1840s and 50s and 60s was the setting up of schools like St. Saint, uh, Patrick's and St. Joseph's. Okay, And children from these, school, uh, from these families went there. So they got a better education and as a result, they, they moved up uh, into better jobs, better houses. In the meanwhile, as the situation improved, as has happened in the Middle East nowadays, people who go there, they write back to their families, they write back to their friends and call them in. So later migrants, probably like my grandfather, my grandfather came there in 1900. Now 1900 is 80 years after this. And by that time, the uh, the Goans, they were more educated, they were in better jobs, they had gotten to government, they had proved the fact that they were very uh, reliable, they were honest. They were, so these sort of things made the Goans uh, progress. And uh, the people who came in uh, later were not pioneers, there were already established things over there. You could probably come out here and live with somebody who was distantly related to you for a while until you got a job and found a place to rent you know, things like that it's it's the same same story all over the world and it keeps on going on thank you sir roland uh, there's one more question from uh, mr james was poke sarpotel available pre and post independence in pakistan <laughs> <laughs> yes of course of course pre and post it was available i mean i mean every go and house uh, Mm, they have sort of hotels. Of course, everybody makes sort of hotel, and and yes, yes, most most go on homes would do the sort of hotel with pork in it. How does it come? Well, it comes. Interestingly, we make sort of hotel out of beef, and I know that uh, my uh, my wife was, once told this to somebody in Goa. And she says, "What sort of hotel out of beef? You're supposed to make it out of pork." So she says, "We don't have pork. What we do?" is you might bring back some sausages from Goa and to flavor the thing, you put in a couple of sausages into this big andi of, of, or you put in bacon, okay? To make it like pork, to give it a different taste. But uh, yes, uh, everything is available in Karachi. Yeah? Bibik is available, uh, Kalkals are available, Nuri are available. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, speakers. Um... There is, uh, we'll take this last question. If there are any questions, uh, Roland, can you put on your, uh, maybe in your contact details or maybe your email ID? Uh, Sir Manon has already put his contact uh, details. Maybe the participants can further ask because we're running of time. You can take the last question. Um, the last question is from Ms. Celeste. Um, when was the last time you visited Goa? Have you had the opportunity to connect with your deep roots in Goa? Well, whenever the opportunity beckons, I mean, uh, I would always want to go to Goa. Uh, it's such a wonderful place to be in. I feel very connected when I'm over there. Everything seems so Goan. Uh, unlike Karachi, everything seems very Goan when I'm in Goa. So I feel very good about it. But obviously, at this point in time, there are visa uh, restrictions. Mm, as soon as they open uh, or are uh, made easy to travel, 
I will surely go. Thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, Sir Roland has left the meeting, or is not? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Uh, so I would like to say just one one or two things, all right? Um, I've always felt, uh, and I've said this at uh, Frederick Norona's uh, GoaNet uh, event, events, a couple of them that I attended, that um, Goans from Karachi have visited Goa many, many times, either on their own or as in groups the group pilgrimages that Roland spoke about, uh, they have taken a number of Goans from Karachi to, uh, to Goa. But none, or maybe just a, a trickle of Goans have visited Karachi. So my question is this, can somebody in, in this group tell me what is the reason that they fear coming to Karachi? Probably I need to check things off. Can I interact? Please. Salsa, how are you? I'm fine. I'm proud to be a Karachi Goan. I know, I know. Yeah. Based in Goa. Uh, as to your question, I wish to ask you, how am I to come to Karachi? What is the way to come? After my retirement in 2011, I've, I, that was the first country, Karachi was the first place I wished to visit. I tried to some extent, but did not succeed. So you please you, tell me. You did not contact uh, Roland or me. Either Mr. Roland or Mr. Menon, please tell me how, what I should do and what you can do to help us. See, uh, everything is possible, Salsa, all right? Uh, with the kind of uh, relationships and, uh, and influence and uh, connections and whatever, and they, 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 they hold us in very high esteem. If we make an earnest attempt and explain that a group of Goans would like to visit Karachi, uh, I am 90% sure that it can work out and Goans can come and visit Karachi. It is only 90 minutes flight from Bombay or to, to Karachi. You are so close, but yet so far. Put it together. And, uh, and even though Roland is in the US and, and, and I'm here in Canada, it can be worked out. I'm quite confident there is a possibility. You know, um, Roland spoke about this is, you know, this is unofficial and this is this uh, reality as well. Salsa, you have been in education and so forth. Roland spoke about many uh, people in Pakistan, uh, the, the majority of the countrymen, many of them who went to good missionary schools, boys and girls who eventually became presidents and prime ministers and judges of the high court and you name it, wouldn't they want to help their alma mater at any time when the school or the community asks them to help? Okay, I will the make biggest, that and I will the, do so. The biggest example, the biggest example that I can give you, and it's good that both Roland and, my, and myself are here on this forum to tell you, is when the government had taken over our Catholic institutions of high learning. I'm talking about St. Joseph's in St. Patrick's, St. Joseph's school or college that you went to, right? So we simply made a request that the school should be denationalized at a time when the country was in charge of the heads of state and people and decision makers who were ex-students of these two schools. So it never came back as a refusal, but they said, yes, we can try.
and it happened. It took seven years, but it happened. Right? So yeah. going back to Goans wanting to visit Pakistan, I would once again like to open up this discussion in a way, maybe on a different forum as such and so forth, and encourage Goans to make a request to visit your relatives and friends in, in Karachi. Mr. Rodriguez I... can be a guided tour better than what the creators get. <laughs> uh, Mr. Rodericks, I would like to add something here. Okay. Uh, because I do know some family friends who are Muslims, who and Muslims, who, who still have relatives back there. Uh, the problem is that there was a visit. I mean, see, I don't want, uh, this is all unofficially that I'm uh, making a statement. Uh, they had visitors here from Karachi visiting uh, their family here in Goa. And uh, after that, after the, I mean, this was about 20 years ago. This was about 20 years ago. I don't want to politicize this issue, but 20 years ago, the visit did happen. And after they left, there was a lot of um, queries, I mean, inquiries by the police and by many other officials at the home of these uh, people who were here in Goa. And after which they have kind of, you know, distanced themselves. And other than, you know, communicating over the media, I mean, the social media, they have avoided visiting one another. Now, I don't, I mean, this is not to politicize an issue, but this is a fact that there have been a lot of queries, inquiries about who are they, where did they come from, how are you related to them. In fact, these are proper Goan Muslims. So I do not know where the administration, state administration comes in or like, you know, even if you have proof that, you know, you, you, you are Goans, uh, I really don't know how the administration works. I think it's a normal procedure when 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 citizens of both our countries visit. Uh, there are protocols which both the countries uh, have to ad adopt, which they do with due diligence, which is quite normal. I leave it at that. But but then you know it it is a little difficult for Goans probably to visit Karachi or maybe Goan Muslims to visit Karachi or. Um, well, I'm uh, simply talking uh, about Goan and Goans, Goans Catholics like you and me and so forth, uh, make an attempt, try it out. Who knows? You might be able to visit your relatives uh, in Karachi. Uh, I'm sure people do understand that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, speakers. It was a very interactive session. Um, I'll hand over the session back to the uh, to Ms. Frida uh, Tavares. Thank you, Janet, for taking us through it. Uh, yes, it was an interesting session. There are questions which are still remain there. Uh, perhaps we can continue this discussion over email, etc. Uh, now, as we draw to an end of this two-day international webinar, we express gratitude and acknowledge the contribution of the many hands that have went in that went into the making of this event. I thank our administrator, Reverend Father Antonio Salema, and Principal Professor Blanche Mascarenes for their support and encouragement of this webinar. Coordinator of this webinar, Dr. Sharmila Paish, has worked tirelessly, resourcefully coordinating and networking across the continents to bring together this collection of individuals, both speakers and participants. Dr. Sharmila, co-coordinator Dr. Afonso Botelo, and the entire organizing committee have put in the extra hours that have made the day. Heartfelt gratitude to Mr. Frederick Narona for his media support and his con consistent, reliable presence throughout the webinar. A special mention of Mr. Warrell D'Souza from the Department of BCA for all the technical assistance he has generously provided us since the conceptualization of this webinar. A thank you to all participants from all over, the various teachers from different colleges, research scholars, students, and friends of Goan Studies for being an engaged audience. The biggest thank you we reserve for our speakers, Dr. Stella Mascarenes-Keys, Mr. Menon Rodericks, and Mr. Roland D'Souza, who across continents, across time zones, have consented to our invitation and enriched us with your sessions. A big thank you to you all. I request uh, Dr. Afonso to kindly post the link to the feedback form in the chat box. All participants, please uh, fill in the feedback form click on the submit button and that would uh, generate the participant participation certificate for you 
you will see the link in the chat box very soon. Roland, I can see you speaking, but you are muted, so we can't hear you. Uh, what is this link, Frida? Uh, it being a, a, a webinar, we are giving participation certificates to our participants, to our oh, audience. Okay. Okay. So the thing is to generate that participation certificate, you have to fill in the feedback form. Uh, sir has, uh, Afonso Botelo has just put in the feedback, uh, the link to the feedback form. Got it if uh, the participants can submit, and then that would generate. Yeah. Valusha has said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Valusha. Thank you, everybody. Well, thank you to the organizers. Thank you to the college and to all the participants. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Uh, and you're welcome to come to Karachi. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much for inviting us. I'm sorry that my uh, presentation started off on a bad foot. It was worth the wait, sir. <laughs> May this webinar uh, initiate a vibrant forum for discussion, for further investigation, for research into Goan migration, into Goan migration to Karachi and Goan uh, migration in general. Um, on that note, I sign off. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thank good you. day. Thank you. Have a good day, everybody.